Hello, and a warm global welcome to our customers, prospects, partners, and team members joining us today for our next Partner Spotlight call on our new broadcast channel, jobsites.com forward slash Amplify. The Amplify Job Science program is a chance for everyone to get even more from the job science solution through knowledge sharing. I'm Robbie Hurd, your host today. I also happen to be the Channel Sales and Alliances Manager here at Job Science. I'm very, very pleased to be joined today by Peter Larson, CEO of DataTrim. Peter, please introduce yourself. Hi, Robbie. First of all, uh, I'm excited to be on the call here. Uh, Job Science is a long-term partner of ours, and uh, we're very thrilled to be part of this uh, Amplify program. I'm uh, Peter Larson. I'm the founder and CEO of Datatrim. Uh, I worked in the CRM business uh, since the, the 80s, uh, so before it was called CRM, basically, doing a lot of implementations on uh, CRM uh, projects across the world, uh, focusing, of course, on functionality and processes, as a lot of people does. Uh, but realized uh, that, you know, without the underlying data being uh, in shape, uh, most of these implementations didn't actually um, do as well as we wanted them to. So, in 2002, I founded DataTrim to provide some experience-based services and solutions around data quality. And um, now, uh, a few years later, uh, we even beyond that traditional B2B CRM and now on this call here, we're going to talk about delivering the same type of data solutions uh, on staffing and recruitment solutions like yourself. And uh, we think this is really awesome, and we're really happy to be here. That's, that's super, super. Um, so we were chatting earlier on, Peter, and you, uh, you mentioned um, um, a little bit about the origin uh, of, uh, of DataTrim, and I, I believe it came from a concept um, that being data laundry, would you mind sharing uh, uh, a bit more about the origins uh, of your company? Well, right. I mean, in the um, in those early days, obviously uh, the cloud uh, cloud consulting didn't exist, so everything happened by the fact that people were sending us files. We were deduping them, we were cleaning them, standardizing them, normalizing them, and so forth, and we were sending them back to them. So a lot of files going forth and back, and of course a very cumbersome process. Um, then in around 2007, one of our uh, large customers came back and says, well, we're using actually Salesforce, and now they have you know, created an API. So instead of us uh, sending the files to you and you clean it up like if we were going uh, to a laundry and you, you know picking up the data again the, the next day, why can't you uh, just pick the data up directly inside Salesforce or the, the job science environment as it's going to be now? Uh, and uh, update the data right in the system. In essence, what you've provided job science customers is, um, and I'm thinking about washing machines and dryers today, they're very uh, economical, they're very efficient, they're state of the art, and they're in our own homes now. So <laughs> uh, it's almost parallel. You're, you're delivering that same level of service in our customers' uh, database. Right, it's a little bit like that, and and uh, of course it's you know we always need to follow up and be uh, in front and be making uh, state of the art applications to keep up with you know the cloud technology and all those things that's coming there. But the fundamental thing and the, one of the fundamental challenges after talking technology is also what's funny with the relation to the laundry is that everyone knows that you have to be done. But nobody wants to do it, right? And so that's also, of course, why a lot of our focus is on trying to make this very simple to use, very high level, so you don't actually have to get your hands dirty in order to clean up your data. Right, right. And uh, most of our customers are professional recruiters or professional business development people. They're all type A personalities. Um, and that's why the Salesforce platform is so um, successful with them because it's so easy to use. Um, but uh, uh, you're right, um, bringing in a service that automatically um, cleanses their data on an ongoing basis simply um, uh, improves the quality. Uh, 
a couple of years ago when we started the partnership with Job Science, we developed uh, a specific integration with the Job Science package so that we optimized everything with regards to performing matching and merging of candidate records. But I also want to take just one second here to highlight the two of the other applications we have, which is a, an application called Datastream Entry Check, which is a very simple application uh, which focuses on you know, the fact that if only we could prevent the duplicates from getting into the system in the first place, then we would be in a much better shape. Uh, and the concept behind this is to say, yeah, but if only our end users would be searching properly uh, before they create a record, we would have less duplicates. But the problem is that they typically don't. Uh, and also because the standard search facilities are very limited to exact spelling and email specifics and so on. Uh, so the entry check is a way of actually putting an extra step into that where our system is doing that fussy searching and coming up and saying, hey, the one you're about to put into system, it may actually be there and this may be the, the person. That's cool. So it seems like what you've, what you've got here, Peter, is a cure and uh, a prevention <laughs> to, to avoid that number one issue. It is, it is a little bit, although, of course, with regards to uh, the whole technology and the user experience and uh, the, uh, well, I wouldn't say limitations, but you know, the, 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 the way that we have to, to pro make this available, there are certain things where um, these two applications play together. So, of course, you can say, if I have entry check from day number one, would I then need anything else? Because then I would prevent duplicates from going in. And the answer is, well, you still may need it because maybe not all your records are actually put in by users. Maybe you import records. Uh, maybe some of the duplicates checking uh, or let me say it like this, in order to find out whether two records are truly duplicates, needs a little bit more thorough matching. Uh, and that's where the dubbers would then work as a sort of a second um, row or second safety net and say, even if something should pass through the entry check process, which is, of course, uh, a little bit more open and it's, it's based on uh, uh, the fact that the end user accepts that this is actually a duplicate, he can technically provide a duplicate if he wants to, but data from duplicate would then be that extra safety net that says, no matter what, then we would have this extra, extra net that will catch the duplicates afterwards and we'll still be able to find it out and make sure that our database is clean. Cool, cool. Do you have an example of how that looks, that uh, dupe status and, uh, uh, and the ability for, for folks to merge when they, when they come across a, a dupe in the system? Right. What we're trying to give the, that, that end user is a very simple experience. So when that user comes in and follows up on a task and want to follow up on a candidate or an account or whatever in the system, actually on that detailed page itself, we incorporate what we call a dupe status. A dupe status that actually just sits there, pops up in front of the user and say, hey, be careful, the record you're looking at looks like a potential duplicate of another record. And this, of course, works on your existing records. So once the matching has been processed through the alerts that I'm going to show you later on, the information about the duplicate sits inside the database and we'll be able to present it like this. But it also happens with that particular job science functionality that we develop when you're actually importing your resume. So when you're actually creating that candidate as the first thing you're actually doing. So Upon the creation of the record, our system will go in instantly and say, whoa, this record looks like it's already in the system. And the idea, of course, is to give that user that warning. It gives the possibility to give that user the possibility to go and look at the other record. But fundamentally, uh, what will happen in most of the cases is that a person will actually go and be able to click on the link here and says, okay, well, if this is a duplicate, then um, let me look at those two records. And then we have here what we call the merge wizard, which is actually a way of actually presenting the two records lined up next to each other with all the details. And from this one screen, I can compare the two records, not only on the fields on the contact or the candidate record itself, but also all the related data which is associated, all the existing um, historical information, all the resumes, all the activities, everything that has happened to these two records in the past will all be visible. And of course, by means of a single click here on top of the screen here, I can merge these, these records into one 
candidate record, keeping, of course, the information uh, that I have selected to keep, whether that is the information on the most recently imported record or uh, information that is on the record that already existed. That's pretty clear. Um, something that comes up all the time from our customers is this notion of main, maintaining uh, both a client and a candidate record on somebody. So I've got Frank Scaramanga. He's already in my system as a client, and it has his corporate email address, uh, um, uh, obviously, because he's at Microsoft, so it's frank.scaramanga at microsoft.com. And then I get Frank's resume in um, six months later because, you know, I'm interested in presenting Frank to one of my customers. Um, how does how does Duplet work in that sort of instance? Right, it's a very good question because, of course, if you're having a a, a simplistic approach to um, identifying duplicates, so let's just take the very simple approach that you know most of us thinks of as the first thing is to say, well, let's look at emails and say, well, this is if the record is there. Uh, has the same email or the same name or sort of combination of that, then it's a duplicate. Then the next question is, of course, says, yeah, but when we're having a database that consists of different type of records, then maybe we don't always want the matching to go against the entire database. So basically what happens with Dublet is that you create what we call an alert. And an alert is a definition of a matching process. So here's an example, uh, and I've called that candidates exactly because this is the one I want to use for running deduplication on candidates because I don't want necessarily to run deduplication on the entire database. I may be saying I want candidates by themselves, I want my business contacts by themselves, and maybe or maybe not, you want actually to take your uh, business contacts and compare again your candidates. You might be curious. Uh, you may be curious to know if any of your business records are actually also in your resume database. But it could also be other things. So let's say you have a larger organization and a very large database. So for administration purposes, you might want to say, well, we have somebody in Canada, they will deal with the Canadian records. We have somebody in the U.S. that will deal with the U.S. records. We have somebody in Europe who will deal with the European records. So we have this way of what we call a filter, where you can actually go in and specify exactly which records do you want to be included in the matching process. Um, and I can even do something very sophisticated. Now, this example here is relatively simple because I'm taking all the records with the record type of candidates and I'm matching them against themselves. So, you see, I have two different set of records here. But fundamentally, again, I could go in and say, well, I just imported 500 new records because we went to a show and we loaded some records of all the business cards we received. Now, I don't want to run a deduplication on all 200,000 records. I just want to take those 500 records and I want to compare them against the records we already have in the system in order to see which of these 500 records were duplicates. Then by means of the filter, you can actually go in and select exactly those 500 records, run the matching, and then as an outcome, of course, you're going to see out of those 500, here's the 75 that turned out to be duplicates, and then you or potential duplicates, and then you'll be able to go in and then actually deal only with those and spend time only trying to merge those and consolidate data from those. That's cool. That's cool. So some of our customers like a pretty sensitive Duplet, and some of them um, appreciate a more relaxed one. So, and, and to mind, um, uh, you know, a, a simple a simple rule might be first name, last name, and email address, or a combination of two of those three items, for instance. Can you share with us some uh, some other examples um, uh, of uh, how I can set up a rule that's that's pretty smart and pretty on um, that that our customers typically like to use? All you have to do is fill out this one screen that we're looking at right here. You activate this alert. That means that our system will go pick it up processes in the background. And then it's our job, it's our the tool of the, the job of the solution to go in and say which fields are we going to use, how are we going to compare, how are we going to decide whether Steve or Steven is the same. Um, all of that is built into the system from day one. Then when you get the results, the, 
that's what we call the matched record. So this is basically a long list of what we call potential duplicates. So you can work with your views here. You can go in and say, I want to look at my uh, candidate duplicates. And these views, by the way, are you know in there by standard, but you can, of course, edit and modify these views like you do uh, anything else uh, across the job science environment. But you get a list of records here. And what you can see here is that each record here is representing, in this case here, two candidates that are potential duplicates of each other. And so what we do in the next step is say, now we found everything, all you now have to do is to say, which of these do you actually want to merge? And to help you in that process, we provide you, of course, with uh, uh, some information elements. Here we have what we call a class, match class. This is like a confidence indicator to tell you how confident our system is of claiming something as a duplicate. So, of course, let's assume you've got thousands of duplicates in there or even well, just hundreds of duplicates in there. Then, of course, you still need sort of a way to take the top-down approach to do this effectively. So that's one way of doing it. But you'll see we also got the different scores because by default, when we compare the records, we'll be looking at the name of the company for account uh, for business records, but then we'll look at the street, the city, the postcode, the country, the state, the first name, last name, email, website, phone numbers, we'll cross-check phone numbers between the, the mobile number and the fixed number and the fax number, whatever you may have, and if you're using information like uh, LinkedIn IDs or Facebook IDs, we'll also be checking all of that. So we're looking at everything every single time. And the algorithms that we've then built in will then take each individual field and compare them based on you know, the, the best practice that we build in, and we'll come up with these scores here. So of course, when you have something that has an email score of 100, that means that these two records have the same email address. Um, when the score is less than this meal, that the email is not the same, but they are you know, pretty close, so there is at least some sort of commonality in it. So what you can do is you get the list, and if you want, if the list is too long, you can actually go in, and so instead of saying, I want to create a rule that finds duplicates like that, all you do is just create a view and says, well, I'm just interested in actually looking at the candidate out of this long list of 2,000. I just want to see those where the emails scores 100, and then you get that list, and then you can deal with it as a priority, of course, because you also probably have to go and look at the other duplicates uh, later on. But we try to give you the total number of duplicates, and then uh, give you the means and the tools to actually go and clean that up. So you don't have to think about all the different rules that you have to create in order to get completeness with regard to the matching. That's already built into the system. That's cool. Have you essentially shown us um, um, uh, the sort of view that a user is going to have on a day-to-day -day basis and also perhaps what an admin will be using? And when I t say admin, then this could, of course, go all the way down because the application is very collaborative because you could actually s define and say, yes, but you know, I have one admin, so this admin is going to take care of everything. Okay, that ad one admin goes to this tab, works with the views, cleans up the database. But if you have a dispersed organization or if you have uh, record ownership in different parts of your organization or different business units who does deal with different set of your records, just imagine that your recruiters and your salespeople uh, is actually working on the same system, but it's actually two different set of records. So you may actually uh, want to have them, uh, you know, have one admin, if I can say like that, looking at the candidate records and have another admin looking at the business records. But it all uh, originates from this tab here, and it's all just a question of, re of tuning on creating these views and saying, I just want to see all those records that I'm the owner of, well, I'm just interested in looking at the one that comes from the candidate alerts and so on. And then you simply just get this list here, and from the list, you work with the list, and the button's on top of the screen here to actually go in and merge it. So that's what, the, that's what the admins are experiencing. What I showed you very early, that dupe status, is technically what that end user is going to see. Um, and the, that end user will then upon this uh, notification of an email, be able to go directly into the merge facility and either merge the, the, the records based on what we see right here, or and let me show you that little feature here that we, you might have seen on the buttons here. We have something that's called a false duplicate because sometimes it may actually happen that our system comes across two records and say, this looks like a duplicate, but when you look at it, it's actually not a duplicate could be, you know, you have two records, they both have info at datatrim.com, but it's actually the CEO and the CFO, and so you don't actually want to merge them. 
It could be uh, for accounts, uh, the parent company and the child company, and so instead you might want to link them together in a parent-child relationship. But the point is that you review them and you decide that you don't actually want to merge them. So what you can do is, of course, you can just say, just forget about it, uh, leave it there, or even delete the information about the record was found as a duplicate. The, prob the problem with that is that every time you run a new deduplication, our system is going to you know, put the list back into, or put the duplicate back into the list, so you're ending up reviewing the same records over and over and over again. So what you do instead is that you use this little flag, false, uh, false dupe flag here, which is actually going to tell our system, yes, we recognize it looks like a potential duplicate, but no, we don't want to merge it, and we do not want to see it again. So even if you have this iterative pro process of doing deduplications, you're only going to see the net new duplicates every time you refresh the view, every time you come back uh, reviewing your duplicates. That's great. That's great. And you know what springs to mind is our analogy at the start about uh, you know how how getting uh, getting a complex appliance, but that but that's easy to use in house is so efficient. I mean, if you think about our, today's uh, today's uh, laundry appliances, they've got load sensing, they've got temperature control, they've got the ability to work hot, ability to work cold. Um, it's uh, and all we know is that we're pressing buttons. And what 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 seems apparent here, Peter, is you've got something that's very broad, and it needs to be because it's addressing a very very complex problem. But it's smart, and uh, it's pretty flexible and adjustable as well. Right, and then as you said at the very end, so it, it it comes out to trying to make something very comprehensible, very complex into something very simple and you know creating some sort of a dashboard or what we refer to as a console that actually allows you again with a single view to actually monitor everything that's going on so you know which program is currently running you know which one has failed you know uh, which one is in the process of being uh, executed and so on so the uh, data trim dubbler console here uh, is again an extra feature that's going to help you give you that overview so that you can actually see that these alerts are running for these countries, they are running for those countries, and you can actually go in because all of the data is stored inside uh, the tables here in the system. You can actually go in and use all the standard functionality with regards to reports. Uh, you can go and create your own dashboards if you want to visualize you know, the number of duplicates per country, per region, or things like that. So if you want to really do a very tight management of what's going on, and even having somebody following up with that data steward in Germany, if they, the percentage of duplicates in Germany starts to grow, you can actually have those type of metrics so that you can actually be uh, notified through uh, dashboards and reports to say, oh, here's something, you know, uh, that's not working and maybe, you know, we need to prioritize, maybe we need to have a call to try to figure out why it's not, you know, going as well in Germany as it is in other regions and so on. So um, all the things that are standard in the platform itself, you can leverage that as well on top of what the application itself is actually giving you. Right, right. Now, I've already mentioned uh, one or two of our customers uh, that have specific challenges, but um, and another, uh, you know, another couple spring to mind. But if you're not a Salesforce.com, if you're not a Teach for America that has, you know, three or four um, uh, Salesforce administrators on staff, how do you get this set up? And what, what, what happens if you're a, a, a much smaller organization and you're actually responsible for running a desk or um, doing recruitment as well as maintaining the data, database? How do you get this set up? What, what sort of training is available? And ultimately, you know, how, how does somebody get started, Peter? Well, in reality, it's, it's really, really straightforward. Um, as I said, this is not an IT tool. This does not require a PhD in, in any level of degree. Uh, it has really been designed uh, to take all of the technology, and there is a lot of technology, and lots of fuzzy logic, and all these type of things underneath the hood here. But the thing is really that we try to make this very, very simple for the end user. So as I said before, it's just a question of uh, getting the application installed, uh, you can go and install it directly from the App Exchange. It will take you less than 10, 15 minutes. All you then have to do after that installation is done is go and create an alert, as I showed you before. Uh, you activate it, 
and you're actually up and running on a deduplication. We follow the clients during this process, typically by having like a one-hour session with them, where we sort of walk through, you know, more in detail than what I've done here, but the process, the flows, where to click and where to go and so on. Um, that one-hour session is typically everything our clients need in order to get up and running. Uh, we don't have a formal training program. We don't have like premier support or anything like that. The people need to buy in, in X-ray to use the system. And we look at that as a proof uh, that the system is actually very easy to use. Everyone gets up and running within very short time. Uh, within 24 hours, the first deduplication is definitely up and running. And they'll start being able to clean up their data. Uh, within very little time. Regardless of whether you're a small company with only five people or whether you're a large organization with 700 people and, f and five administrators, the job is basically the same. For those that are a little bit larger, let's say with five administrators, of course, there's going to be a little bit more with regards to um, de defining the alerts and the filters for segmenting the data uh, for those different uh, data segments or the business units or whatever uh, the way they want to do it. But again, that's something we will then address during that first w uh, one hour call. And from there on, uh, I would say 98% of our clients, they were able to take it from there and run with it. That's great. That's great. And, and good news that uh, our customers can simply go to the app exchange to, uh, um, to get up and running. Um, that's going to be music to a, uh, a lot of people's ears. Peter, it's uh, it, it's always a pleasure to um, to talk with you, and uh, it's only it's only really now that I've I've truly got a sense of the value that you're bringing to not only the the wider Salesforce community, the problem that's never going away. In fact, it's probably getting worse and worse in terms of data cleanliness uh, that our customers have to contend with on a daily basis. So thanks so much for your time. Well, thank you. It was my pleasure. For uh, the Amplify viewers, please know, uh, enjoy some uh, additional uh, partner spotlight sessions at the jobsites.com forward slash Amplify URL. In addition, for uh, the job sites customers, um, please continue to provide your feedback uh, via your ideas tab uh, in your org. And for those that want specific information around Data Trim service, please visit their website at Data Trim. Com. You can also reach out to Peter directly if you wish at peter.larsen, that's E-N at datatrim.com. And finally, for those interested in hearing more um, about how they can move their uh, recruiting business forward and future-proof their business with the world's best CRM platform, please reach out to us here at sales at jobscience.com. And for those that are attending Dreamforce, please know that we'd be delighted to meet with you throughout that week um, at the following times and the location that you see here. Once again, thanks to those viewers um, for another uh, Amplify session and look forward to uh, upcoming sessions in the weeks to come. Thank you.